With the ever-increasing demands to not only teach the subject according to the specification, but also embed its safety, British values, prevent, safeguarding, IT, employability, healthy living, English and maths, I, like many other teachers, have felt overwhelmed and puzzled. Surely doing all these while taking care of learners' diverse needs and interests is not an easy task. Through trial and error over the years, I have created an approach which I think allows me to do all these without overwhelming the learners. Here I will share my approach to meeting individual needs and much more by describing the structure of the lessons I teach to GCSE maths learners. As with every process of meeting others' needs, this starts with an assessment of the starting points. I considered using the diagnostic assessment each learner completes at the beginning of the course, online interactive quizzes that provide instant feedback and are completed at home, short, Kahoot, Socrative or mini whiteboard quizzes which are done at the beginning of the session, or a short topic-based diagnostic printed on paper which is given to learners a week in advance and is self-assessed by them first thing when they arrive. This is called flipped learning. I decided to stick with flipped learning for this particular group as it gives me a fresh assessment of their needs, does not take much time in class and does not require access to device, something which is a problem for some of my learners. I called the assessment the destinations catalogue with the intention of adding positivity by considering all the specific mini topics as destinations, which learners visit only if they haven't been there before, making their journey unique and individualised. All the assessment methods, however, have their own advantages and I use different ones for different groups. Having identified the areas of strength and those for improvement, learners then use a learning objective sheet with objectives that are closely matched to the questions of the assessment. They rate their confidence in these objectives and there are always some blank spaces for learners to create their own stretch and challenge objectives. These types of objectives are normally easy to assess and based on the lowest levels of Bloom's taxonomy. For objectives which relate to the higher levels of the taxonomy, I use this reflection diary which intends to combine the results of the diagnostic assessment with the learner's own self-assessment of confidence to determine a RAG rating. Great emphasis is placed on dirt here, dedicated improvement reflection time. Now it's time to actually visit these destinations. Learners use books, the internet and ask each other before they come and ask me for help. This is formerly known as C3 before me. The list of websites and instructions for learners is included in an information sheet that each learner has. This encourages learners to become independent and mimics what happens outside of the classroom where there is no support from the teacher. Learners take a bit of time doing this and then they are encouraged to complete a short quiz, a worksheet or add notes to the notebooks to show off their tan after visiting these places. This is also a good time for reflection by revisiting the learning objectives and rag rating their confidence again. After this point, the focus is on the application of the skills in real life scenarios. Examples include estimating the lifetime earnings using career coach, estimating the cost of training using the National Careers Service website, calculating how much tax they would pay each year in their chosen career. And I think this is a great help for learners to make that connection between what is learned in the classroom and what happens outside it in the real world. Something which is not very easy for learners of maths. After the application, emphasis is given to the highest levels of Bloom's taxonomy, such as analysing, evaluating and creating. Here learners make links between the topics, create spreadsheets, posters and mind maps. They typically work on solving worded questions which link different topics together. This also gives me a great opportunity to embed naturally a range of topics such as prevent, e-safety, equality and diversity and sustainability in this particular carousel activity in statistics. Through the activities done so far, I hope that learners have learned, for instance, what a bar chart is, how to extract data from it and how to create one. But do, do they actually know what a bar chart is not and how a misleading one looks like? 
you'd be surprised that most of the time they don't. This is why one activity in each topic has a focus on misconceptions, including sorting statements into true and false, or sometimes always and never true. Just as important as setting those targets at the beginning of the session or activity is the reviewing of them at the end. I'm often guilty of not allowing enough time for reflection at the end, but have learned that pausing to reflect and retrieve what has been learned in the activity, session or the previous sessions is very important. Mind maps and posters are a great way to revise and make links between topics, just as meaningful homework that gives exam practice is. And here the journey for the week is complete. Thank you for listening and let me know if you have any suggestions on how the approach can be enriched and improved. Thank you.